I mean, I'm not blowing my horn, but it's just like, you know, this is, this is severe battle. We're in I severe was reading this morning my daily devotional, and it was talking about intercessory prayer. And it said intercessory prayer is not that you put yourself in God's place, but you put yourself in the place of the person you're praying for. That's what's happening. Then you can truly intercede. Yeah. Yeah. Say that again. Yeah. Don't put yourself, you know, in God's place, like you're God praying for this person, but you're the victim of whatever it is that you're experiencing the same thing and pray for them. Then you'll have earnest intercessory prayer. Yeah. It's kind of like it makes, it makes it a lot yeah. more personal. It makes it a lot more personal. That was in the uh, Psalms that we were talking about. I just want to ask Fritz. Psalms 56 to 60. We discussed the word mikdem. They still don't know exactly what that means, but in those Psalms, David was crying out to God, Deliver me. Deliver me. I mean, Saul was chasing his butt. He almost killed him how many times? It was like a dozen years. And uh, David could have killed him, but he wouldn't. It don't take much. And uh, and he was crying out to God, God, deliver me from my enemies. You know? The pride. That's what I saw. He never once did he say, Hey, I'm supposed to be king. Why do I have to do it? Hey! hey. Who is that man? Better never leave. Well, we're done. This is the second shift. You know, Blade is only a figment of imagination. Last week, I want to do that. You're just lucky. Last week, we talked a little bit about. Uh, Home ministry and stuff, and so I went down uh, uh, Friday to uh, the outreach that uh, Al, was, Al was doing at St. Vincent's, uh, and uh, just to uh, just see what he's doing, man. But he's doing a great job, to be honest with you, man. He, uh, like he was saying, he's getting all this uh, little bags that he makes, you know, for uh, for the guys when they get out. They're actually there for breakfast, they eat, and as they're leaving, he gives them a little bag for a snack for the, for the day. And, uh, but what I liked, what I saw was, uh, also, he uh, has like t-shirts and some stuff, you know, sometimes. And what I saw, what I liked was the fact that he actually was uh, just uh, stand, uh, talking with the guy. The one guy you were praying with when I left, uh, he was on a wheelchair that so. You know, he's not just uh, uh, slamming bags and giving bags out. He's actually ministering to people, so I really like that. So, uh, kudos for uh, the ministry that you're doing there, buddy. Building relationships. That's exactly what it is. That's what, you know, I just had a little bit of that. And we've uh, developed probably about 10 or 15 relationships with different people. And, uh, the majority of them move on, but there's, there's a small percentage of them that continue to become weekly and, and uh, they, these, are, these are people that are working mowing grass and doing carpentry work and stuff like that, but they just don't have enough to, to live and, and uh, uh, it's really, it's the guy that he's talking about lost one leg, one leg. And uh, he, I didn't, well, I don't think he, you didn't hear that he's, he's got liver cancer. No. And uh, he does drink, and he, and he smokes more, but he's down to two beers a day, <laughs> and two cigarettes a day. <laughs> and, and I, you know, I, I encourage him, but I told him that, that I smoked for many, many years, four packs a day when I quit. Whoa. And you can't just get down to two cigarettes. If you can't get down to two beers, you know, if you you got it, you you've got to turn it over to God and let God take over. And when He gets your heart and, you, and your mind together, then all things are possible. <coughs> and I'm I'm curious to see 
where he's at this coming week when we go today. So I hope that will get us on. If you guys can keep, uh, keep, keep this gentleman in prayer. Uh, his name is? You know, he talked about the intercession. Um, he has friends with other cancer. His name, his nickname is Tiger. And God knows who Tiger is. That's for sure. So, so if you keep him in mind, I, I would appreciate it. Keep him in your prayer. Okay, here's the deal. Uh, me and Mike and his uh, beautiful wife were having a breakfast right here yesterday. And we were talking in conversation, so. As I was talking to him, of course, he was sitting at that end of the table, looking this way. I noticed that he wasn't paying attention too, too much. He was trying to, but he, his eyes was on the little old man that was sitting right here. And I looked over the way, so I saw what he was doing, and I knew something was going on there. And, uh, oh, yeah, that's right. And I knew that something was going on there, and Mike kept looking over there, so he said, excuse me, so I gotta go see who uh, came over here. So he came over to the little old man that was standing, uh, sitting here, and uh, the little old man, he, so Mike asked, is it, are you okay, can, uh, can I help you, or something like that? Tell the story. Well, I just felt compelled to talk to him. Here he is. Uh, and, and it became obvious that Several times he had to get out of here, but he couldn't change the fact that he was So I went over and I introduced myself and I said, I felt compelled to come over and talk to you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Anyway, as it turns out, he had a little oxygen machine that you carry for free. And he was trying to get to his car, but he didn't have the strength to carry the machine. Well, he's okay. He just needs uh -huh. a little rest. Or, you know, I, I've done that a thousand times. I think this, the food ministry that I do, I always say, you know, at least a half a dozen or so bags with me. And, uh, and I've made it a point now, and, and I challenge the church that I used to go to to do this, and we pass out the, the, the bags or the boxes back then to give the people. So when you see a homeless person, you pass it. Make a U-turn and go back to him. If you're going to be late to church, be late to church because what you're passing up is an opportunity. An opportunity. And, and people would say, but then I have to make a U-turn and sit for that light for five minutes and wait and make another U-turn. And I said, whose time, who's time is it? What you tell them is say, what about that man spending an eternity in hell? Yeah. I think it's worth five minutes. Five minutes. And, and that's what I found. One of the things that really kept me in this ministry was exactly that. Was we don't take the time. Like we feel like Andre going to the going to the nurse. So many people I've heard you say it. Uh, Boy, oh, I can't, I can't handle the smell. Of, you know, it is, it is difficult. But do you think that a person in there might not be able to handle hell, and you might be the one that can witness to him? So you know, God didn't say it for me. <laughs> he just said that we're, we're supposed to go out and do the work that he. I, I, I don't like to use the word work. You, you really will ever hear me say God wants you to do anything. But God doesn't want Andre to do that. God expects Andre to do that work. 
I think he expects all of us to do the work that we don't want to do. He didn't say occupy do I come, this is idle words. Yeah, he challenged us to do that work. And, and you and your wife volunteer that on Free Food Friday? Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to vote it. I'm going to vote it this afternoon. Good, yeah. yeah. When, when is it? Happy. Is it today? Today, yeah. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. What time? Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm going to get there probably. When do they get a crowd? What, what, what time? What, what time? They don't want to start getting Yes, to work. What time? They get I think they get there at five. About five. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that's back in that other building. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you, you, do you guys have any use? I got about 20 pounds of eight calf. Can you use that at all? I wouldn't, but stand Decaf coffee. Dunkin' Donuts decaf. I have about 20 pounds. Well, I have a testimony. Yeah, I did. Because I was going off kind of I thought I was going to Barton Basement to get some food to make up bags, okay? I go there and I buy these uh, cheese crackers, okay? Handy little thing to give out to the homeless because oh, yeah. cheese and crackers. And I did get the guy to give me a little bit of a discount. He gave me 10% on these little bottles of this with quick chocolate. When I come out of the place, there's a lady coming out there and she's wanting me to give her a ride. And I mean, she's really, you can tell she's in bad shape. So, Actually, she came to me before I went in there and I said, I'll be back out, okay? She was waiting out there, and I ended up praying with her. She was a believer, okay? But she just hit, hit hard times. I asked her how she ended up in the street. She said, bad relationship. Okay. But I spent about a half an hour, 45 minutes praying. And here I thought I was going to Barton Basement to get food. Well, the Lord had another part of it. But of course, I had to tell her she wanted me to give her a ride, and I said, no, I said, that explains something to here. My situation right now, I can't do that. Said, but, you know, I said, I'm going to pray. And she said, oh, that's even better. So, I mean, it, God will put you where he wants to put you. Exactly. Now, I started making up the bags at my church the other day. I got six bags and put a pack of those uh, crackers in there, uh, a cookie, you know, one of those uh, big cookies that you buy. I bought some of those, too. Uh, and a bottle in there, and I six bags on the counter. I told everybody in the church, six bags over there. Anybody wants to put more bags in there? Because anybody can take them out, that's fine. If not, I'll take them out. And then I went over to the bookstore last night and I talked to Julie. She's going to let me put a box in here to collect them. So if anybody wants them, she's going to be collecting that. We can put them in plastic bags or whatever they make them so, You know, we've got the Pinellas Park Parade coming up. And a lot of people don't realize that a lot of the people are in that parade are almost getting Really? Yeah. They're, they're there because there's something going on. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's candy being thrown. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's rather obvious that they're homeless when they got their <coughs> <coughs> yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And the thing is, most of them are trying to hide though because the police are out. That's yeah. what I was going to ask you. If you guys have had any opposition when you're out there kind of feeding or whatever. Because I have a, I had a young lady that on Facebook or whatever that I know or whatever like that, and her little millennial friend was out there feeding them. Sandwiches and stuff to them every day, or whatever, like that. And the cops stopped us, told them to knock it off, and said you have to have a uh, food permit or whatever, yeah. like that. And, a, yeah. and, a, and a, yeah, and that she was going to get ticketed and taken to jail if she got caught. We've been doing this a couple of weeks, so I'm going to see you. I have a plan, but I uh, it works for me. What is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I, we were going down to St. Pete County, uh, Myers Lake, and a cop pulled up. They were ready to run us out. And, and I walked up and put the badge on him. I said, hey, hey man, you know, if you don't want us to do it, we won't do this. You know, but I don't want to, you know, put you in a spot. I, I have had, and he ended up saying, hey, man, I didn't see it. I'm out of here. And then, every week after that, we would go. And as soon as he would see me, he would wave and make that turn. I have uh, 20 years I've been doing that. Never have I ever had anybody tell me anything. They do sometimes. And if they do, I say, look, man, I'm going to do it anyway, brother, because that's my constitutional right to do that. 
He doesn't want him laying around in the streets and stuff like that, sleeping underneath stuff and everything. And he used a uh, young, one, young woman that walked from her insurance building and got attacked in one of the little things as a, as a, as a example of the homeless being down there and basically tried to chase them all off. He actually offered them a bus ticket. If they would take one if they would take a one way bus ticket hundred miles away. No, hundred miles away in any direction. Well even even before Christ man, some of the other uh mayors try to do that. Uh, they take him, uh, they, they don't fix the problem. They don't fix the problem. They just take the center back. They send them down to the police place up there and the fish are parked in the floor. That, it's not why I talked to Jim. He worked at that state park. It's been a long time since, uh, I've stood up, my wife and I used to go to the park. We'd sing, we'd friends and stuff, and then they'd give out food. Well, they put a stop to us doing that a long time ago, 20 years ago. We're at the Lance Park problem. And the, the reason being was they wanted us to pay a lot. I forgot what it was, $500 or $1,000 to clean the mark up afterwards. And that was their justification for telling us to put do it. The group we were with. I don't know if others have brought into that. This is what you put in your bag. No, we well, used to be a new group. They used to basically sleep in that little, you know, they had the little coves and the like little water spots. Oh, yeah. and there's one right outside of Wawa's at the back behind uh, Jimmy's Sports Bar and Christine's restaurant. They used to just, you just see them laying there. Dead bodies or whatever like that. So I used to, I used to, every time I went to the exchange somewhere, buy a case of water. And keep the water in the car so it was air conditioned so it'd be cool and get stuff and everything. And I was there one day giving them like the little bags of cookies I get from uh, Sam's Club and a box of 30 or 50 or whatever like that. And I was giving them cooking water out there one time to try to get a cop with his lights at me, like, move on. So, you know, like, for us, when we start doing the coffee, uh, and if, you, if, you, if you guys go out and buy coffee, uh, donate us a uh, coffee to our coffee for the day. Uh, that's the biggest thing that we will need. And then uh, we'll make up sandwiches. Or uh, if uh, Andre uh, is making soup, we'll make a sandwich. We'll take it out there with, uh, or whatever, you know. Periodically we'll do that. You know, and, uh, and anyway, you know, you know, develop again like a, like a different tool, you know? For me, what are Five ten. A five ten window was sleeping, but the woman next to her was on a suicide watch. So I'm outside the room, and the, the CNA goes, "Hey, suicide watch." So, you know, I didn't have a no clue, but I went to go visit someone else. So I end up about twenty minutes talking with Elizabeth, who was seventy three years old. And she's on a suicide watch. I don't know why. I think maybe she had a stroke. But her lips and voice was very augmented. Very difficult to understand. <clears throat> and I just talked to her about her name, which means, Elizabeth means consecrated to God or given to God. And, <clears throat> you know, she was a Catholic, like she was born a Catholic, and uh, I don't know if you can ever be born a Catholic, but uh, it, it's it's some of the understanding, and I, and I tried to ask her, well, were you ever confirmed, or did you have your first communion, or I try to get onto their territory where they can understand about Christ and what Christ has done, and so you spend this time with someone who is maybe maybe not even capable of understanding but that's not our problem our, our issue is to just share christ and the love of jesus so i prayed with her touched her hand you know 
just touched her hand gently. And the, the nurse outside says, you know, I just want to tell you, I, I have been listening to you for years. And I love the stories that you tell. Of course, I sing a lot in that. I didn't sing this particular moment. But uh, here's an opportunity. You, you went for something else. And that's the hook. You know? And you don't even know. But you're there. And then you buy up an opportunity to witness Christ. Listen, I have so many things wrong in my life. If I concentrated on all the wrong things in my life, I would never do anything. But you know what? I have one thing that's right, and that's Christ. You know, you witnessed that nurse, too. You may not know what you said. Oh, absolutely. She's, you know, she's been a nurse for 20 years. And, uh, you know, one of the things that people who have been around for a while, they've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. Most of the time, they've seen the ugly. Ugly, yeah. A lot and, more ugly than anything else. So, I had uh, another testimony from my <coughs> sister who I bring juice to. And uh, she's got MS for 33 years. You know, I've known her from the consulate, and then she moved to another nursing home. So I continued bringing the juice to her. Uh, and she said to me last Sunday, she says, you know, I don't know any man in this world who would ever bring me juice for four years. Three times a week. And she says, uh, you are a kind man. I says, can you talk to my wife? Because <laughs> she don't think I'm so kind. But it's interesting that, you know, see, we labor in this world that is, that is uh, anti-God, anti-Jesus. And God says, go out. Go and make disciples. You know, disciples are, it's long term. You know, I'm not, you know, I've been in enough Baptist churches that they would focus on win souls, win souls, win souls. Listen, you can win all the souls you want, and you have no idea whatever happened with them. But you know what? When you make disciples, then you make disciples that go and witness for the one who saved them and touched their lives because they saw experientially that somebody loved them beyond themselves. And listen, you talk about this life in 2 Timothy chapter 3 talks about the characteristic of mankind is to be lovers of self and not lovers of God. So, you know, whatever you do, you do wholeheartedly and look for those opportunities because they're there. You hit on something and you just roll in. It's so hard to bear. Sometimes, I know I do. Sometimes, I do not. And it is more so out in the world than I do in my own home. Sure. And, and in my own home, I should be doing that too. Oh, and absolutely. I find myself being more behind the heart of the home than I am out with somebody that I don't know. You know, my, uh, my wife and I have been going through a struggle with it. I know she's going through a lot of emotions and a lot of jobs. And, uh, and uh, but you know what? That's good. Because it gives us an opportunity to uh, let's get real. Let's get real. And so we, uh, like, you know, I didn't go to church Sunday or Sunday before that. And, uh, I tried to go to church. And, uh, to be honest with you, 
time and then all of a sudden she says you're mean you can be mean man. and yet not not physically man but she said mean you can be mean and, and i'm thinking to myself when what you said was i don't think i've ever had anybody out here on the street that i've ministered to ever tell me that you're me but your wife is said and, and, and that opens my eyes up and said hello you know, I, I know that I can, if I can do it out on the street, why can't I do it at home? And, and it's a reality check, what you said, a smack in the back of the head, saying, I can get it. How many times, how many times, I don't have time to do this right now, honey. Yeah, but get a, get a phone call. Not what you're doing and go. And you're out the door. Yeah. So they see that. And then they they're more important than, than her. Well, that's part of the, what, what, what she calls me. You know, because you can do it for somebody else, but you can't do it for me. And I just. He 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 just. Because the ones who love you expect, and they love you, so you expect them to just like, well, they understand. That you expect them to understand. Okay. What is that saying? One minute, Sharpie. Yeah. Probably. Hello. What I think of, not long time ago, early in my marriage, there was a song that they played, uh, or early in my coming back to the, uh, coming to the Lord, actually. There's a song called Two Sets of Jones. You ever hear that song? You know, and it was a story about two young families both starting off in life. One had everything. 
you know, it gave up money and it had everything. So there wasn't a struggle so much. And the other one was just constantly, and I mean, even so far as these people at work would come and take up a collection to help pay for the birth of their child and they didn't have money and stuff like that. And, and in the end, uh, you know, the one that had the, the strife and what we would consider a curse in our life, you know, we're the ones that were blessed because when these hard times come along, you know, they were more quick to handle it. Yeah. You know, and it's the same, it, it works the same in our relationships with our wives and stuff, too. Uh, you know, I mean, we all like it to be hunky dory and great and everything, but it doesn't like end up being that way. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes, out in the future, God's got a purpose for you going through these struggles and stuff, and it makes you stronger, actually. I went to a, uh, a memorial yesterday. A <coughs> uh, lady, uh, her, uh, uh, Dubinsky, we call her Mrs. Hootie. Her husband, Mr. and Mrs. Hootie. <coughs> so, he had a doobie. He had I think we used to smoke them. Yeah, yeah that too. And uh, when, we, when we first came to the Lord, uh, and we started going to the one church where they were there, and uh, ours was a trick. He was one of those guys that uh, tell you who, uh, how it went. And, uh, but he was funny. And uh, his wife was uh, the epitome of uh, God, Dolly, you know, what a awesome woman. And so that, that couple, that lady became my wife's uh, spiritual mom. Uh, and Art, uh, I always have to deal with art. So he's a good guy. I mean, he, should, he just tell you what it is. It's funny. Both of them have passed away since. Haven't seen him for years. You know, his, his daughter, uh, their daughter called us. They wanted us to be there. Because, uh, you know, they, uh, we were with them a lot. And they, uh, we used to go to the Bible studies in the hall and stuff like that. And, and uh, that's when, you know, we, we actually started uh, church, and uh, I, I miss those days. And I miss the days that that uh, we go to people's homes you know, and have Bible study maybe every day, every week, and uh, you feel those relations. I, that's why I love. I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer. I'm a firm believer of home groups. You know, I'm a strong believer of home groups. And you feel this relationship with uh, people like that, and we've had a lot of trash here. And uh, it's just good to be there and to hear the testimony of this lady. And what they left behind. You know, what they left behind. The testimony. The ministry that they have done. That's good. Yeah, they get somebody that has something good to say about somebody, you know? <laughs> and, 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 and it was good. I, I was, uh, I enjoyed uh, being there. I enjoyed it. You talk about like the home group, they almost can become uh, a cool little uh, what I want to say. Uh, uh, Accountability department, the co-educational type of accountability department. When you when you meet in, in a group of like six or eight people, your goal is to build that relationship. And, and, and you you know, I, I start checking on them. I'm going to say, "How are you doing this week?" Or "How are you doing, Sam?" You know, and you begin to do that. You don't you don't find that in churches. Your churches. I laugh because, because I, I preach in a couple of churches myself. And, and when, you, when I stand up there, and I told the minister of uh, our church in Indiana, I, I said, when I finish this sermon today, I said, did, did, you, did, you, did you hear it? Say it in a way. What are you talking about? And I said, well, well I was really... Led, and I was allowing God to speak through me. 
I can just feel it going no. right over there. They were not get and it's because they come for one purpose, and that's to attend church for him, the Holy Teller wife. I went to church today. And they, they, didn't, they weren't going to worship God. They were going because it was on their checklist. And I just saw oh, this. Yeah. You know, one thing about ministry that I've seen over the years you know, if I had advice to give anybody, it would be be yourself. You know how many of us try to copy other people, other ministries? Don't do that. God created you as an individual. And, and your ministry is for you. It's something you can do, no one else can do. You know? And I'll use myself as an example. Years ago. Well, here, 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 guys here, you know. Years ago, I tried to, my big, the, the guy that really was, I'd watch him and he'd just sing on the inside of me because I could get him. Of all people, when you say his name, you'll probably go, Jimmy Swagger. <laughs> okay. There is a river that flows from deep within. There is a fountain that cleanses my soul from sin. I mean, I could have really identified with his preaching and singing the whole nine yards. I understand this. Well, so I finally went to, well, here this ministry is, is, has their own college opening up. You can go there and become part of their groups and whatever. Wife sang, she may be able to sing. You know, with them and all this time, I had all these plans to fix in my head. What I wanted it to be like, and you know, they start failing. And, and God, God told me, you know, don't place your eyes on man. You know, and and I'm not. Everyone makes mistakes. I understand that. You know, but when that big mistake comes. Because God had dealt with me on that issue of setting the man up instead of setting him up, you know, it kept me from practice. And so many people, and you know, we've been part of the ministry where they put the guy in the cold but almost like God. <laughs> and when they fall, they just sit. You got church divisions and separations and all this stuff. Uh, but you know, we're all human. You know, uh, Back when I started in the new school, I was a home in the And uh, they, for me, it didn't work. I, I, I had it for a while. I had one for five years in my house. And then later on, I always had them. And in fact, I'm just talking about it. But what happened is, while uh, uh, some of the people in some of the churches kind of pulled back from it, that some people use that platform to stop their own church yeah. or to steal people or take people from somebody else's church. You know, and that's, uh, there's always a, that problem. So, so the pastors would get all uh, funky or crazy about it, you know, and say, dude, if they don't go, they don't go to you. And, you know, those people that do that, we're stuck in all that for a long time. But, uh, but it's really, it's good when you get together and, uh, because that when you build those relationships, especially when you're a new town, you, you, you have a race, you know, in, like in, 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 in this area, you get to meet uh, people, uh, relationships, uh, you're able to help one another within the group and stuff like that, encourage one another and stuff like that. You know, I know, I know back in the day, uh, 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 you guys used to have uh, a bunch of people over your house and all that. Other stuff. You guys did the music stuff. You know? well, we did that for quite a while. We did a couple of books. We did uh, Purpose Driven Life for a year and a half. Uh, they wanted us to do it in four or six weeks. And four or six weeks? Yeah. Okay. You know, listen, we, That's the first chapter. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so a year and a half, and and then we did uh, Wild at Heart, Captivating, and uh, it just, you know, the reasons to get together. We did uh, we did uh, concerts out front of our house. We'd have as many as 150 people 
front of the house. Full, <coughs> full, full band, line, all that stuff. And those are all seasons of life. You know, well now, now we're in a different season. And uh, look for those opportunities because it's not like it was. It is changing. It's always changing. And so, you know, change. You know, my father said this to me. Uh, I think he was about 70 years old, and he says, you know, uh, if you do not change when it's time to change, someone will make the change for you, and you won't like it. You will make the change, and whatever that change is, whatever point in your life. Listen, if you can't walk so good, get a ranch house. Not a two story. You know, if you, if you can't go to the bathroom so good, get a bidet. Or, yeah, well, you know, see. The it's a, thing is porch. It's, it's, a, a it's, a, it's a glorified water fountain. Yeah. Hot yeah. Uh, I think of the, the tubs today, right? They sit in the tub. Fills up ten grand. That's one month in the nursing home. Spend it. Stay at home as long as you can. If it kept you home and you had to spend ten, fifteen grand to stay home and save you another two years from going into that place, spend it. Take the mortgage. Take the reverse mortgage. Anything to stay out of the nursing home. 